state's going to do, they might come down to 12.5%, the state might say we're not giving you nothing, and they might say we won't pay the other 25%, we don't know that. So basically all the damages the town has received with the flood there, the town at this point is going to be responsible for 25% of the cost. Uh, it's unfortunate we pay everything up front before we get any kind of reimbursement. There's an awful lot of documentation that has to go with us regardless to what it's got. Anyway, but do have a ballpark or total figure for the damages? Or? Well, the last of numbers I've been looking at, you're about $4,450,000 damage at this point. That's all the best. Uh, that's not considering any kind of uh, mitigation <coughs> we may do to prevent future floods, uh, things, you know. I'll use for an example, Pizzelli Road. There's a tile up there about five foot in diameter. I personally feel it's too small. Uh, something they may want to consider looking at is putting a bridgeway in there, if not a box culvert of approximately 10 foot. And if we look at things like that, you're probably in the six figures just for that one little project itself. So these are things that we need to look at very closely when I have my kickoff meeting with the FEMA representatives when they come out to the township itself and sit down, 
have a meeting with them, then we'll do a road tour of all the spots and hit. And uh, we'll discuss possible mitigation projects at that point. So unfortunately, it may cost the town a little more money in the future, but hopefully we'll avoid this kind of problem. I think uh, in reference to the project that he's talking about, I believe that's either the third or fourth time that that's been torn out here since 06, isn't it? Correct. You go back to the records and you just keep working it and keep working it. And it's really, you know, you put good money in bad all the time. And it's real tough on the town at that point. You know, the guys get very tired of well work, they do a nice job fixing some things, and all of a sudden, bang, it's done again. So we're going to see if we can't fix that problem once and for all. No guarantees it's going to, you know, with the trees and stuff that comes down from these pipes and the clog. But we're going to look at all different avenues at that point, and we're hoping maybe the state will kick in some extra funding. So the town has to absorb that 25 percent. I will keep you guys advised when we have a kickoff meeting with them. But as of lately, uh, all the work we've been doing is considered emergency fix work, so it's not concerned permanently fixed in regards to work. All right, I did meet with a couple of representatives from the Constitution Pipeline on some mitigation projects out in the north end. Uh, over on Hawkins Road and Miller Road, we got some huge culvert pipes over there, <coughs> 10 foot diameter roughly they are. The head walls have fallen off, they've been in there for many, many years. Um, they come to the town asking, you know, they're looking for mitigation projects and they're possibly to fund them for the townships, actually for all over the county. I've been talking with the county and like I said, I've had these people come out, they took pictures and talked about it a little bit. Um, I haven't heard anything back in the last week and a half. I'm going to probably shoot an email tomorrow to see where the town stands at this point. With that. If there's any available money, I'd like to see it come to the town here if possible. Uh, the new truck has been in. It's been delivered. We put it into service last week. At this time, uh, we haven't had any problems. Thank God. Everything seems to work and good on to it. Um, I got the representative of the sales reps coming back. One's coming this Thursday, and I'll have another one probably next week for the drivers who are the mechanic. If they have any questions for them, they can talk about the truck at that point with them. But it's been in and it's in service, so you guys are aware of that. And the vouchers here this evening, so. For payment. Our chip projects have been all completed. Um, you probably see quite a few bills in this month to do with chips, but the projects have been completed for a year now. Next thing on my list here is a uh, Bluestone Gas Company here. Uh, we've had a meeting with them here last week. It talks about final road restoration uh, so we get these roads repaired, the damage that they've done. Basically, this Friday, I will have a rough draft of final restorations of what they're going to do to our roads here in the town, or what they're projecting they'd like to do to our roads, I should say. Um, I need to set up a workshop day or night next week sometime with a board, since this has started before I come into office here, and bring this proposal to you guys to explain exactly what they want to do to repair these roads. And uh, we need to do this next week because I have to have that back home at the end of next week in order to get this out to bids for all the contractors that might be doing the work for the town. We all know that. And we look to our leaders for guidance to keep our town together, to help make a situation when it's volatile, to calm it down. We have a very strong town board here. We have a very good town board. We appreciate all the hard work that you do, but we need your leadership. We elect you because we expect you to do a good job and protect your community, stand up for your community, and take care of it. And right now we've got another volatile issue going on, which is the sign postage on the utility poles. Um, Things are, were calming down, let's say, and they're not now. After the signage, people are mad, they're angry, they're almost hostile. And we look to our leaders to stop that sort of, bring our community together, not create hostility, not create that type of environment in our community. We need you to do this for us. This is why we elect you. I'm going to read a letter that I... Uh, have here, it's directed actually to you, and uh, from NYSIC, 
So it's Dear Supervisor Decker and Ms. Prophet, obviously, Allison, they don't know you're here yet, and you can clue them in. We have discussed with two of your constituents regarding concerns of the growing number of posters and signs being placed on utility poles in the town, in particular regards to gastroom. NYSIC and Verizon do not permit any posted on our poles. Do not permit. It is illegal. And I have brought this matter to the attention of the low school NYSIC office. However, we are not able to aggressively police this. Please be aware that many towns, Department of Public Works, Highway and or Police remove these illegal postings. And NYSIC encourages the town of Sanford to do the same. Jim Salmon, Regional Manager, Outreach and Development, Clifton Park, New York. Do you have a phone number? Hmm? I sure do. 518-664-9534, extension 353. Now, you know, like anybody, like people cut across my driveway, come to a town meeting, I don't care. You know, NYSIC has been very good about people putting their little, you know, grandma's bake sale signs up with stains. These signs are bolted, which is actual damage to the poles. My husband was a telephone lineman, and this is damage to the poles. Please help us with this. Please be fair. Thank you. I guess I'm going to respond a little bit to that. <coughs> that issue has been brought before the board before. Uh, these poles are in the village. Uh, the town of Sanford basically does not have any authority for removing signs. Uh, that authority, that authority, is going to have to come from the New York State Electric and Gas. Even though they wrote a thing here that says we give you permission. Mm -hmm. We are not going to take the liability of doing it. Uh, if we go in and remove one sign, we have to remove them all, mm -hmm. which you agree to, mm -hmm. which would mean your flea market, mm -hmm. it would mean every sign. Yeah. <coughs> I think you would have to carry it on to uh, take down your Christmas lights, you would have to take down your flower pots and everything else. Um, I'm not going to ask anybody from the town of Sanford to take down any signs. It's not our responsibility. It's not, it's not something that the town of Sanford is going to do. And um, <clears throat> I don't think that the town itself is not supporting the, district, the, the town by not taking them signs down. And this is something that as supervisor, you can ask any other coordinator, but as supervisor, I'm not going to ask anybody from the town state to take down any sign. I don't care what sign it is. I think that will be to that. I agree with you. What might be a safety issue to my guys climbing a ladder, taking signs down, also. Um, you know, I don't have. Yeah, about it, they're they're looking at uh, another local law to compare our law to that law to get some ideas if our law is needs an update. But that as far as right now, there our law is actually a better law than what they're looking at. So uh, that's where they stand right now. It's taken a couple months to kind of discuss this because they looked at it, <clears throat> broke away for the, the next month looked at it, come back <clears throat> and evaluated the, the two laws and then, you know, they, they're, they're going to update wherever they need to update in our law if, you know, compared to the other one. So that's where they are right now. So it could take a few more months if they're going to change it. Yeah. If, and that yeah. would be a public hearing. Yeah. Like Pardon? Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. 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 Y